I'm George Chu. I'm gonna take over, put a tourniquet on this person, stop his bleeding, save his life, so that he can have another chance in his life. Call for help now. I've just stopped CPR. This guy's not coming back. I just noticed he actually doesn't have a bottom half of his body, so I realized that is pretty much a reason to call him as dead. This morning, we're just gonna be demonstrating compressions. This is the most important part of CPR. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No breathing, no chest rises. Starting compressions, call 911. The most important of the two is compressions. And evidence shows that if you're compressing properly, not only are you moving the blood around, but you're also moving the air in and out of the lungs. So you're doing two things with those correct compressions. So if in doubt, compress, don't stop until somebody comes and helps and relieves you. This is George Chu, and he's the best uh, tourniquet person ever. Gonna put a tourniquet on you, stop you bleeding, save your life. What, what did I do? I just stopped bleeding. Stop a person from uh, losing his blood. So I am going to now tighten it. I'm the EMT here at Louisboro. This person is bleeding badly. I need to put a tourniquet on, stop his bleeding, save his life. See, tighten it. Now it's, now it's done. Okay, now stop the blood. Come on. All right. Stop the blood. Put your hand on. Great. Careful. And what? Go. Keep stopping. There you go. There you go. Quickly, quickly, stop the bleeding. Yeah, you see there's the clotting. There it's starting to clot. It's kind of like this kind of congealed thing. There it is. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. That's the blood already clotting. This is something you might see in a supermarket. The one they showed you over there is my personal one. Pull red handle to open bag. Press pad firmly. Peel other pad off blue plastic. Apply pad to bare skin exactly as shown in the picture. Stand by. So you can't touch the Preparing patient while this is shock. happening. Shock delivered. Provide chest compressions and rescue breath. Which is what this does here and what we showed over there. So this is the star of our show here. It's a thing called a, a Lucas device. It provides automatic CPR compressions. It doesn't get tired, it doesn't stop, and it increases the survival for out of hospital arrest from roughly 8% to roughly 30%. In order to make it work, you simply turn it on. You then lower the plunger until it touches the patient's chest, lock that position into the machine. At that point, you start compressions by pushing another button. Hi, I'm Nancy. I'm a volunteer with the Lewisboro Volunteer Ambulance Corps, and I'm going to show you how to save a choking baby. So this baby is, um, we don't hear any breathing, we don't hear any crying, baby might be turning blue, baby, maybe baby just ate something, and there might be something in its airway blocking its breathing. So first thing we want to do is look and see if there's something in the mouth. If we can see what's in the mouth, we can take it out. But if we don't see it, we do not try to take it out. Also, first thing you do whenever you have an emergency, call 911. Get the help from the ambulance on the way. Um, then you can take over and you would support this baby's neck, tilt them down on your arm, and you give them five back blows. One, two, three, four, five. And then you flip them over, look and see if maybe it came up. Maybe you can pick it out now. But if not, you're going to do five upward thrusts on their, right between their nipples. And keep this going, five and five. One, two, three, four, five. And every time you turn it over, just check and see if there's something you can take out. One, two, three, four, five. You keep this up until the baby either goes unconscious spits out the, the, whatever the particle was that was obstructing its breathing, 
or you, the ambulance comes. But this is this will potentially save the baby's life while the other help is on the way. Uh, my job is basically the day-to-day -day operations, the training, and uh, basically the upkeep of the facility and the vehicles. Hi, my name is Assistant Chief Brian Porco from the Vista Fire Department. We're out here supporting LVAC at their open house, and uh, it's great to see all the community members out here supporting the volunteers in our town. I'm uh, Mark Sheeran. I'm the president here at LVAC. Uh, this is our first opportunity to have the community back uh, with us here after a couple of long years of pandemic. Uh, so our goal here today is just reintroduce the community to what we do. Uh, we're all volunteers here. Nobody's paid. Um, we're 100% reliant on the community uh, for support. We don't get any tax money. And so uh, these events are great every so often to have the community uh, involved and to see uh, where we do uh, our work and what we do to help them uh, and their families. Grilled cheese with bacon, is there any other option?